Today, we're going to jump into Infinity Kingdom, take a look at patch 1.7, which is coming in just a couple of days. What's going on, guys? Cheers. So let's go over patch 1.7. This is a huge change coming to Infinity Kingdom. These patch notes came out a couple of days ago. They also released a preview video here on YouTube and the official Facebook page. So we're going to jump in and I want to watch this video. I haven't seen it before. So I'm going to watch it here for the first time with you guys and see what exactly patch 1.7 has to offer. And then if there's any confusion, we'll take a look at uh, some of the patch notes and maybe some pictures as well. Patch 1.7 preview, baby. Let's go. Legion of Frostborn cross server KVK. Okay. So it looks like this KVK or server versus server event is going to have a brand new chronicle system all the way up to potentially 10 or later. Let's see here. Uh, this territory has been damaged by the blizzard. Prosperity will no longer recover every five minutes. 1% will be lost. Okay. So we're taking some prosperity damage here out in the cold so it looks like the entire map hang on let's take a look here the entire map is completely frozen over completely frozen over there's a lot going on here you can see what looks to be little passes here is that what that is that what we're looking at let's play the video let's take a look i don't want to i don't want to guess so here we are building we're constructing some thermal towers and i'm going to go over what some of this stuff means here in a second we'll take a look at the patch notes um, but as you can see here this thermal tower has actually illuminated that area which is really cool i am the king so let's take a look here um it looks like we've got regional point matches so that's really interesting here um is this a new daily special bundle oh can you buy all the bundles all at once okay um so you purchase all i guess that's a new little uh benefit there that's cool so we got some optimizations so you can see the skills of the gnome bosses that's really awesome i love to see that um what are we going to take a look at here oh so okay so same thing during like the little expedition here that's very cool the well of time um q dragon emojis dude that's what i've always wanted we love q dragon emojis um norheim survival guide a new chapter so okay interesting stuff here um, more information for players is always good i love the transparency there um there's a bonus code okay so that's exciting stuff I love I love the how the lightning dragon just was breathing fire there anyway let's take a look here this image was actually posted on their Facebook page so this sort of uh, map is is giving some backstory as to where they got the idea right there's always been that barrier at the top of every single server and now we see what the purpose of that barrier was from the very beginning from the very beginning of the game it seems like they've been planning this so that's incredible um, how long in, in advance they've been thinking these things through um, so it looks like the map here is divided into different sections you can see like this is a corner and then there's this corner and then there's this corner here obviously this top area probably you can't access and then the wall area you probably can't access here so it looks like we've got like one two three four five six seven eight zones and then we have an inner ring and then we have a center ring so this you know this looks to be like a a classic server versus server kvk type of map that you may come to expect from a game like infinity kingdom let's take a look closer at the patch notes here okay so legion of frostborn that is the official name of the kvk the server versus server game mode that players have been anticipating and wanting for six nine twelve months now players have been eager to fight other players in other servers so this is super super exciting in order to be eligible for this kvk you must have you must be in a server that's been open for at least 60 days you have to complete chronicle event 21 royal ambition and your lord level your castle has to be at least level 15 and you have to be within an alliance as well so really interesting stuff um this is going to be uh in different seasons okay so there's going to be different seasons for different servers which makes a lot of sense you know players who've been playing the game for nine months are in a totally different realm than players who you know maybe just started and they're you know two months in and they're just seeing their first uh sort of kvk so um let's see here it says eight servers will be grouped into one large legion to take part in the legion of frostborn together so that's what we see here there's eight different um sections here on the map so that makes total sense your entire server is probably going to spawn in a particular region at the very beginning and then you're going to progress forward from there it says season one will match servers of adjacent server numbers into the same legion seasons two and three will group servers from a larger range we're going to get into a little bit more information about that here in just a second but that does make sense your first ever kvk will be with the other servers around you so of course that makes a ton of sense it says there's going to be a comprehensive analysis of each 
server's lord power previous battle results and lords activity level this is to match opponents based on their strength so it's fair and and all that good stuff you don't want to just crush the competition every single time because that's going to be boring so you want to place servers that are you know uh similar strengths and stuff to uh, up against one another um each conquest season will start immediately after the end of the previous conquest season so that's going to be really intense back to back to back i wonder if these conquests uh, or these kvks are going to be a little bit of a slow start hopefully so that way players can recover a little bit from the previous one the trial season i believe is the season one so it's going to be a shorter sort of kvk it seems like um and it has different matching system and rewards and stuff like that so that's going to be really interesting for new players as well um expedition information so it says basically your territory on your original continent will disappear and it will reappear in the legion of frostborn battlefield all lords of the same server will be will be relocated to the same zone again what i showed you here these are different zones so all of your server will be teleported into this small area and then another server here another server here and so on and so forth on that outer ring you can return home for a random relocation item and then you can return back to the battlefield at least 10 minutes later if you wanted to go back and come back and things like that the entire map is going to be shrouded in darkness so this is going to be sort of like a fog of war type of mechanic going to be really interesting to see how this plays out um it says an ancient and evil power has shrouded the entire battlefield in darkness the darkness hides all movements so you cannot see other lords territories troops or relocation sites members of the same alliance can see each other and friendly alliances can see each other as well um the location the locations of resource gathering points gnome cities and checkpoints can be seen vaguely but you cannot view detailed information about them to obtain complete information you must first gain vision proximity so what is vision proximity it says your uh so your territory you will start with a certain range of vision proximity centering on your territory so you can view targets close to your territory so in the video that we watched you could actually see that here this is the the player's territory and then off to the right here you actually can no longer see anything it's it's sort of dark in that area and so you don't know what's over there and that's how vision proximity uh is gonna work apparently after your alliance occupies a city or checkpoint you'll gain vision proximity for the city or checkpoint so it's not gonna be just your city that reveals the map it's gonna be other things as well uh, thermal towers are gonna play a super important part in this kvk game mode it says your alliance can build thermal towers that provide a large range of vision proximity to all alliance members and you're going to share it um with you know other friendly relation alliances as well thermal towers are also going to play a really big part in uh, this upcoming section for blizzard damage so again as you can see in the video that we watched it says this ter territory has been damaged by the blizzard prosperity will no longer be recovered and it's in fact going to decrease as well so this player's city is in the blizzard you also have a 25 percent reduction in gathering speed if you are within a blizzard zone and the gnomes are even more powerful in those blizzard zones as well so how do you function normally when you're taking all this extra you know all these extra elements are affecting your account it says geothermal zones that's the answer they are natural geothermal energy sources near gnome cities and checkpoints they prevent the surrounding area from taking blizzard damage while in these zones your territory will also be safe from blizzards um, thermal towers can create ge geothermal zones for all alliance members a completed thermal tower will protect everything within a certain range from taking blizzard damage if a resource deposit is, with, is within a drill thermal zone troop gathering speed is returned to normal gnomes are easier to defeat there as well and they're shared by all lords regardless of who occupies the relevant city checkpoint or thermal tower so if you are in a different alliance you can still teleport uh or, or be within a geothermal zone owned by another alliance and still reap the rewards from that so that is great again if we take a look at that video a little bit closer you can see this thermal tower here in the center of the map this territory is within that uh that sort of circle so it looks like they would be protected against that blizzard damage as well so that's really good stuff I like the way that these towers look they look like very like a strongly garrisoned outpost it looks really cool I like the design so alliances can build thermal towers by consuming Alliance resources when Alliance members gather resources in the frozen land so in the KVK map some of the gathered resources will be converted at a certain ratio into extra Alliance resources you still keep all the resources that you gathered it's just however much you gather there's a portion of that that will then benefit the Alliance as well so being super active all your members always gathering all the time super Super important there and that also prevents you from like going back to your your home territory and gathering resources and then coming back into the kvk map right because obviously you know you're going to be taking 25 percent 
uh, slower gathering speed unless you're within a geothermal zone and this sort of prevents you from doing that right because if you go back then you're not helping your alliance at all right because this says it's it's converted um within the frozen lab producing thermal towers um you can produce the r5s or r6 can start that production you can only build one at a time and the process cannot be canceled once started so building these thermal towers is very meaningful and you really have to have a, a a strategy moving forward you can't just be building them randomly okay um you can use quick production to spend extra resources to build it faster so that is important if you're in a rush um and it says that you can store them in the alliance warehouse um, the warehouses hold a limited number of them um so the more that they're on the warehouse the more time and resources are needed for an additional thermal tower so at first the thermal towers are going to be really cheap and then after you've built you know 10 or more or however many all right it's going to get more and more expensive up until you reach that cap okay the first one can be built anywhere with inside your vision proximity okay that makes sense and then your new thermal towers must be placed within the vision proximity of your current thermal towers and cannot overlap with the geothermal zones created by other alliances thermal towers and it says after its place alliance members can dispatch troops to start constructing it the more troops are dispatched the faster the construction speed so we've seen this type of thing in other sort of games similar to infinity kingdom it's sort of like a flagging system right so you're going to be able to move across the map by building thermal tower thermal tower thermal tower and each build is going to require the participation of your alliance so that's really interesting we've mentioned this before your thermal towers will give you vision proximity and geothermal zones as well um if the geothermal zones are overlapping the overlapping area will only belong to the thermal tower that has been constructed first so first come first serve however vision proximity is unrelated everybody gets that vision so that is good um, you can also destroy an enemy's thermal tower as well so obviously right at the beginning you're only going to be with your you know fellow kingdom right but moving forward into this game mode you are going to be fighting other kingdoms presumably right other servers uh and you know destroying their thermal towers is going to really um that's that's going to be how you win right that's going to be how you win so let's take a look at these patch notes it says you have to first defeat all troops garrisoned at the thermal tower so you can defend them obviously by dispatching troops there after the dem demolition troops have entered the thermal tower the durability will fall gradually okay the speed with the durability falls will increase gradually while the demolition troops are inside if they leave or are defeated the thermal tower will gradually recover its durability as well so there's going to be some back and forth battles there um, there's a limit to the number of thermal towers each alliance can build right so again being really thoughtful with this is important um you can abandon thermal towers and sort of destroy them at uh, at any time and you can cancel that abandonment at any time so that is really interesting you can only do one at a time as well uh, we also have checkpoints so we've got an image of what these checkpoints are going to look like they're basically massive barricades within these ice walls it looks really really cool okay like something out of like game of thrones right it looks awesome so if we take a look here at the map these checkpoints are going to be how you move from one zone to another okay so uh, i think at certain points in the development of this kvk um it's going to be available to sort of occupy these checkpoints which will then allow you to progress further into the map into a different zone okay so doing this is similar to occupying a, a city right you have to reduce the walls durability to zero within a time limit then dispatch troops to attack the enemies defending the checkpoint defeating all uh, defeat all defending troops to occupy the checkpoint um all defending troops are located in one district in the checkpoint okay so it's gonna be like a central uh, central area it looks like and the reason that these checkpoints are important right is because you're not going to be able to just go from this zone to the center of the map right you can't just teleport your city there all willy-nilly okay you're gonna be locked within that zone unless you can defeat these checkpoints so progression is crucial right and and, and defeating these checkpoints is going to be one of the the only ways that you're going to progress forward in this uh in this game mode so this is going to be really important stuff now, on top of that there's gnome cities okay occupy cities in the battlefield to gain special resource rewards the higher the city's level the higher the level of special rewards some known cities in the central zone will produce multiple types of special resources simultaneously so really cool stuff there um, all gnome cities will randomly produce one or more types of special resources depending on city type at set times the higher the city's level the higher the chance of producing valuable resources resources produced by the city will be sent to all members of the occupying occupying alliance after the required waiting time 
after a gnome city is occupied by alliance for the first time its garrisons will no longer automatically recover um, to ensure the security of the cities alliance members must donate various resources to train garrisons in the city the higher the city's level the more resources are needed to train a garrison train garrisons are automatically deployed to the city's various districts uh, training will stop if there are insufficient donated resources or if the maximum number of garrisons uh, has been reached so again we can see in the video there's tons of cities that are up for grabs here in the frozen realm of course you're going to want to be able to grab as many cities in your starting zone as possible right that's going to be crucial moving forward and then you know once you start contesting with other players you start fighting you're going to be fighting over those cities because you know like here we see um severe looks like this is level seven city you gain 50 percent gathering speed in that area you get an, an additional uh victory rewards plus there's a city specialty here so that's also um it looks like that's still either under development or it's maybe it's gonna be random right that could be the case as well there could be a loot pool and you randomly get something from that table now it looks like from this map it looks like there's actually quite a few checkpoints leading from that starting zone here okay so you can see at level eight 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 these are three of the checkpoints and it looks like those are going to correspond to this portion of the uh, of the zone and then if you look to the right there's a 999 so these are level nine checkpoints um and that i assume would be this portion here because this portion of the of the map is actually leading into this into this inner circle right so these are it's actually gonna be harder to get into this zone than it is to get into adjacent zone so that's gonna be interesting i'm, I'm wondering how that's gonna work if you're gonna be able to just uh you know after a certain amount of time just go right into the zone of another uh, of another server that's gonna be really crazy stuff there but now i'm sure you're wondering how do you win right how do you win this kvk it says to preserve humanity's strength the council of sages has ruled that each expedition cannot exceed 45 days so you won't be in this map longer than 45 days the trial period will be even shorter so your first ever kvk is going to be less than 45 days um, once the limit is reached all lords must retreat during the 45 days if an alliance manages to occupy the gnomes capital city for more than 24 hours which i assume is going to be the center of this map here uh it says then humanity will retrieve victory all lords can then end the expedition early uh if a server occupies the gnomes capital for more than 24 hours during the expedition period that server will be judged to have won the expedition will then end early uh, a server occupying the gnomes capital at uh, 00, 00 utc on the 45th day will uh complete will get complete victory okay when the expedition ends servers occupying any citadel in midgar will obtain a courageous victory so there's two types of winning right you either get complete victory where you actually fully won you occupied the turn of the map and then courageous victory will be awarded to those that came close but didn't quite get it let's take a look at what they have here for rewards it says there's alliance rewards and personal rewards as well as achievement rewards chronicle rewards and a shop so that's cool stuff um faction power progression rewards when your alliance reaches the required amounts of faction power from occupying cities you will earn the corresponding cold silver rewards a stackable percentage bonus will be added to the above rewards for every gnomes capital or citadel occupied for each server so alliances that are more powerful who just perform better are going to get more rewards as well alliance rules will be ranked based on the faction power from occupying cities the alliance members will receive a reward based on the ranking at the end the alliance that occupies the gnomes capital or citadels will receive additional rewards allocated by the alliance leader up to one reward per player and cold silver rewards that all members will get all members also gain special uh, resource rewards as well we looked at that already you can earn legions mark by building thermal towers demolishing enemy thermal towers attacking cities or checkpoints donating resources defeating other lords territories uh, when legion of frostborn ends lords will be ranked based on their total legions mark and receive rewards based on their ranking so basically the more active you are and the more valuable you are to your alliance the more personal rewards you're going to get as well um, Legion of Frostborn includes an achievement system, alliances, and individual lords can com complete achievements to earn rewards. Cool, I like achievement systems. Um, Legion of Frostborn includes its own chronicle, complete chronicle missions to earn the corresponding rewards. We saw that here in the video, right? There's primary objectives and then secondary objectives. So that's always great, especially for new players, free to play players. You know, if you're active in an alliance, then you're going to get a ton of this stuff. Uh, take a look here 1.8 million gems. That's insane. All right, there's also a shop. So if mankind achieves victory in the Legion of Frostborn, they will be, they will bring ancient relics that once belonged to humanity back from the frozen realm all lords who participated in the expedition can use cold silvers or gems 
to purchase these rewards um, so if you get a complete victory you can purchase divine's prof uh, prophecy if you get a courageous victory you can get divine's will and then if you got if you didn't win at all but you participated you can purchase things from divine's uh protection from the legion shop so i imagine that's going to be sort of just like the contention of relics shop right obviously you know the better you perform there the the better rewards you can purchase from the shop so this is a little bit more about the season system it says the new season system was created to satisfy the development needs of servers at different stages of progress the season system categorizes servers into various seasons based on certain rules as each server progresses through the seasons the maximum level will increase and new technology and talent branches will be unlocked we will make a separate announcement when the new season system officially starts stay tuned for the latest updates so that's gonna be crazy right does that mean you're gonna be able to take your city past level 40 your mortals to t6 t7 like that's gonna be insane preparation season servers that have not completed the last chapter of the chronicle they're in the preparation so this is a brand new season right season one is servers which has which have completed the last chapter of the chronicle but have not completed the first round of uh, server versus server basically then there's season two season three and then conquest season so servers which have completed the third round of legion of frostborn are in the conquest season so i imagine you know maybe season two is when we start to see an increase in city level troop level or maybe that's only gonna be in conquest season can't wait to see what they do there um the server preview feature has been removed been moved to the season system looks like they've updated throne of the supreme there's now a social feature built in so comment barrage declarations and a battle report sharing feature have been added to create a livelier atmosphere in throne of the supreme cool stuff all players in the same tournament grouping uh, can leave comments up to three times per day comments will scroll across the event's main screen cool stuff um, during the regional point race you can add a custom battle declaration that can be changed once per day um, and a battle report sharing feature has been added to the regular season allowing you to share your own battle reports to the server chat channel a new survival guide chapter the third chapter of the norheim survival guide titled ultimate champion is now available this chapter covers the territory expansion covers territory expansion and becoming a champion of norheim it contains strategies for capturing cities as well as guides to all large-scale events and game modes including the mysterium illusion battlefield throne of the supreme contention of relics battle of hysteria melina's ambition and infernal assault so this is basically like uh for new players who have never seen these types of, uh, of events before right or maybe they haven't watched any youtube videos about like battle of hysteria for example right they don't know what these things are um they can go into this little built-in guide and it, it teaches them you know sort of what to do which is great i think that's really important for games like this um you know these games can get pretty complex you know especially if you jump right in after the game's been out for a year and just like oh my god what are all these different events so this stuff is really good for new players we've also got some optimizations which i love to see to provide a better battle experience with clear strategic choices version 1.7 brings optimizations to boss skill displays the auto fight system thrown on supreme and active events um so to tap uh, tap a known boss on the open on the world map to view its skills and other descriptions so you can adjust your strategy accordingly good stuff um ta same thing for world of time it looks like so that's important to know um previously i think players had uh, sort of had an understanding of this but you would have to look elsewhere to figure out what does what so now they just straight up show you which is good i think throne of the supreme new access button add a throne added a throne of the supreme button to the top right of the main screen allowing you to quickly access the tournament um changed if the attacking team does not beat all the units in the defending side when the battle of time is exceeded the defending side wins to if time runs out before a uh, victory is decided the battle will enter over time and will continue until one side wins so that's good i like that divided missions in the mission panel into daily missions and round missions lucky guess added a setting for lowest multiplier um okay interesting stuff here change store storage limit to 20 optimize the layout love that stuff there some events melina's ambition added participation rewards for players who participated but did not deal any damage to known gnome troops um infernal assault added event missions complete event missions to claim the corresponding rewards king of the hill a rash fragment will be added to the king of the hill event okay so we see some new fragments here this is awesome this is always exciting other optimizations uh you can now use chest in your backpack from the resource item shortcut panel that's super good i love that i love that artifact materials how to obtain added information about current methods to obtain artifact materials allowing you to quickly jump to other methods or open chests um, change your default conversion quantity to 10 added a shortcut feature for using resource items cool stuff add more information to the rally details panel including rally bonus and estimated arrival time that's always good i love that um, adjust the difficulty of prosperous event uh, life event missions and adjust the rewards for the prosperity level armed troops and expel gnomes event a cute baby dragon emoji pack i love that we love cute baby dragon emojis uh, added a feature to allow you to buy three uh, packs from daily deals with a single tap 
that's good i think a lot of players are buying all three anyway so that makes sense um fixed an issue in auto fight where models could not use skills when rooted so okay I like that they've fixed that as well. It looks like they've done some balancing here. So they've increased the energy recovery for uh, Cyrus, Dito, and Arash from uh, 64 to 83, 64 to 83, and then 64 to 66. They've also changed uh, Manko's skill here. So now it uh, it channel channels a Dazzling Light for 15 seconds while channeling the skill, uh, granting control immunity to all friendly Holy Immortals and increasing dodge rate to all allies. After the spell channeling is complete, cause physical damage to all enemies once every three seconds until the battle ends. Cast will no longer recover energy after the spell is cast. Okay. Okay, so that's gonna be one of the biggest updates we have ever seen here in Infinity Kingdom. And my God, is that a breath of fresh air. I am so excited and happy to see how passionate the devs are about this game and you know massive updates like this always just breathe fresh life into the community a lot of players who've been sort of on autopilot for a while have something to look forward to and new things to do and of course this is also huge for players who you know have wanted to play infinity kingdom but they have been sort of waiting for there to be a really big server versus server event i know that's what gets players really excited about games like this so if you haven't played infinity kingdom yet and that's you download in the description below there's a link down there to download infinity kingdom totally for free now more than ever is the time to jump in and enjoy the fun as always give the developers feedback on this update i'm sure they would love to hear from the community over on their discord channel their facebook page everything like that you always want to let them know your thoughts and opinions and they're always responding to comments on facebook as well i've seen that especially twitter they're always on these social media platforms addressing the community so you definitely will have your voice heard now there's going to be more information about the legion of frostborn event coming to this channel and of course more gameplay of the event so make sure you stick around for that and of course i will be participating in the legion of frostborn event as well i do have an account in server 97 as well as my original account in server 21 so if you do want to play with me make sure you join there more than likely i'll be using my server 21 account but if anything changes i'll make sure to pin a comment down below anyway with that being said guys uh if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the algorithm as always download infinity kingdom below with the link subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload an infinity kingdom video as always social media links are also in the description make sure you follow me over there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace